Hey everybody, this is Doug with B&H. RAW is here on the Panasonic S1H. Right now with the Atomos Ninja 5, we can monitor and record ProRes RAW video over HDMI from the S1H. We're going to get some early impressions and we're gonna look at the fantastic color and exposure manipulation options that you have in post. By the way, if you've never worked with RAW video before, this could be a fantastic way to get into it. The S1H is already one of the most capable mirrorless cameras available, so it'll be very interesting to see where it stands with this new firmware. First and foremost, this is a free upgrade. I think everybody needs to know that. This is a free firmware upgrade. There is no paid option for this. Uh, it gives you a full frame 35 millimeter readout. That's the full sensor at 5.9K up to 30 FPS. That's the high end spec. Right below that, you have a super 35 readout at 4K in a 17 by nine ratio up to 60 FPS, that's right. Now, just a little note about that before we move on. The 4K option with this is actually, believe it or not, a little bit over DCI 4K in terms of resolution, but it does match the ratio. So if you're interested in shooting for DCI spec, you can still do it here and you actually get a tiny bit more resolution in the process. Now, it wouldn't be an S1H video without some anamorphic options in there. And I'm pleased to tell you that yes, you can do raw 3.5K anamorphic Super 35 up to 30 FPS, and that is a four x three readout of the sensor. So as you all know, it is a little difficult right now to shoot outside, but I did manage to get some quick shots in my neighborhood. The setup's pretty easy, we kept it simple. All I did was mount the Ninja 5 onto the hot shoe of the S1H and just grab myself a small HDMI cable, that's all it takes. And later on, I grabbed a few shots in my backyard to test low light sensitivity, along with some extreme contrast from a fire pit. So we'll take a look at that later on. The Ninja 5 supports HDR monitoring, so you have a few options when it comes to exposing a raw image. Monitoring can be done either with the Ninja's default 709 conversion, uh, your own specific monitoring LUT, or in the HLG or PQ HDR modes. Since this is a pre-release firmware, we were advised to follow the monitoring on the Ninja 5, but that does mean we really get to see just what the raw dynamic range of this camera is when monitoring in PQ HDR. You see all the highlights and all the shadow detail at the same time. It's kind of wild. Right here, I'm writing exposure with a variable ND filter. When switching to 709 monitoring, it's extremely overexposed, well past the point of saving. And you can see that in the PQ mode, this kind of looks like a brightly exposed, but mostly acceptable image. Now you should know, in practice, you should always expose with your intended medium in mind. The better approach would be to have a custom LUT in place rather than the Ninja's more generic 709 conversion. That'll get you into a, a ballpark exposure, but it does cut out a lot of the dynamic range of your sensor. You're better off using something like this Panasonic created Nysys 709 preset which produces, in my opinion, a really fantastic exposure reference for onset monitoring. You also don't wanna do this kind of exposing to the right that we're doing here, just because you have the headroom. Doing this for every shot only creates inconsistent exposures that all need to be color corrected in post, and oftentimes in different ways. But anyway, when we switch to PQ, we know that this information exists, you can see it here, and we should be able to grade it down in post. That's what this test is all about. So here we are in the new beta version of Premiere. ProRes RAW, I gotta say, does live up to its name in terms of performance. Without any thought, Premiere just jogs through the footage pretty quickly, and this is not a high-end computer. Judging by Premiere's preview, it looks like Premiere does its own internal Rec. 709 conversion, and it appears to be very similar to the output shown on the Ninja 5 when put into a standard Rec. 709 monitoring mode. So at first glance, this looks way overexposed. We saw that before on the Ninja, but of course we know from having monitored it before that there is indeed detail in the highlights. So in Premiere's master clip control for ProRes RAW, you have a simple exposure option. You can use this to bring your clip down to a normal level before grading with something like Lumetri. You can see the results almost immediately. Shots like this one from my living room are a great way to leverage highlight recovery. You can simultaneously lift shadows and bring down much of the overexposure in the windows. That's not to say you should rely on something like this, or forego proper lighting especially, but this does give you a lot more flexibility with exposing your image. Now on the other end of the spectrum, we have low light sensitivity. The S1H has a dual native ISO, the upper range being 4000, so we've engaged the higher ISO for this test in my backyard. However, I also wanted to push the sensor a lot by making this a very high contrast shot. 
There's some light bulbs strung along the fence that gives some nice specular highlights and overall light pollution into the scene, but the fire gives us a lot of wild exposure changes that we're gonna have to balance with the darkness. RAW from the Panasonic S1H is awesome. There are only a few cameras at this price point that shoot RAW, but this is the only full-frame mirrorless camera that outputs up to 4K 60p, supports anamorphic 4.3 readout, and has more of the professional monitoring and LUT features we've come to expect in Panasonic's lineup. I said it earlier, but now with this new firmware, it really needs to be repeated. The S1H is one of the most capable cameras at its price point. As one might expect, ProRes RAW is enormous. A one terabyte card can fit about 48 minutes as reported by the Ninja 5, so do your research before getting into a RAW workflow. Speaking of, the Ninja 5 held up like a champ. It handled RAW recording without a hitch. I could compare exposure between modes accurately and quickly, and it never had an issue with the HDMI connection, which was my concern. The setup is almost laughably simple to get the absolute best picture quality out of this camera. So that's it for the new Panasonic S1H RAW firmware update. I'm Doug with B&H, and I'll see you next time.